Two, count them, two brand new Silverados were recovered from the ocean floor where they had been sitting for 22 months. And this one is more visual than anything else. Um, I figured I could show you guys these pictures real quick here. Um, just because, you know, we see these barn finds and all, and the cars have been sitting there and exposed to Mother Nature and the elements, and they've been rotting for a really long time. But we have never really had the opportunity to opportunity to see what a brand new vehicle exposed to the most extreme elements for a long period of time would look like so here's the picture um one of the pictures that was going around right and we have all this corrosion and you know it's just kind of beat up and banged up anyways the story behind these things is there was two trucks there as you can see here another truck in the back over there um, basically, uh, there was a ship with all these containers on board and there was 81 that blew overboard due to high winds. And we aren't quite sure what was in the other ones. I believe that one of the other ones had tires in it. Um, but basically, man, these things sat on the ocean floor for a span of nearly two years. I, I believe again, I just feel like I read this somewhere and then I couldn't find it again. They said that I think that things had to settle a little bit so they didn't disturb it and end up spilling a bunch of stuff into the ocean. But they were recovered after 22 months. Uh, each one of the trucks is said to have been worth $95,000. And they were on their way to Australia to be right-hand drive converted. Uh, somebody had some serious money dumped into these things and they were ready to really just go all out and have the trucks that they wanted. I assume, I don't know why, I guess they, I guess they don't have diesel powered pickups in Australia. Maybe they were getting a better deal by having them shipped or something, but long story short, someone was getting ready to spend some serious money on these things and they were just dropped into the ocean. I just like imagine getting that call as like the buyer, like Imagine how, like, I, there are people who have jobs where their job is basically to get yelled at on the phone all day, which has to be demoralizing. I feel for those people. But imagine being the person <laughs> responsible for making this call, getting on the phone and being like, hey, yeah, that $200,000 were the trucks that we were shipping for you that we were responsible for. Yeah, we dropped them in the ocean. Oh, oh, no, we can't get them back for, for two years. Hopefully your insurance will cover it. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. Um, I mean, shipping woes suck, right? And that that's a pet peeve of mine. I don't know, like, I don't have very many pet peeves. I do have a couple. Um, but one of my pet peeves is people complaining about shipping on Facebook, especially. People get on Facebook to complain, just like kill me. I'm like, just just shut up. Like, just shut up. You just shut up. You don't have the right to complain about shipping, especially sometimes things go a little bit too far and companies like companies are irresponsible as hell sometimes, too. And they kind of have, you know, they, they ditch their responsibility and they just leave you hanging. But like people would get on Facebook and they'll be like, man, my uh, my uh, what did I order? My PlayStation controller didn't get to my house in in the 24 hours that they promised it took two days amazon sucks fedex sucks the whole world sucks everything everybody's against me and everybody everybody's irresponsible except for me guys shut the hell up like nobody cares number one about your shipping problems and number two be a little bit grateful that you can click a button and have a playstation controller at your house in 24 to 48 hours or anything that you want like people's not being grateful is like the worst and then with shipping i just like especially these days where people some people can't grasp the fact that literally everybody is at home and ordering a bunch of junk and these shipping companies are overwhelmed and it's like if it's a day late it's a day late you'll get over it <laughs> but anyways rant aside uh it would majorly suck to have these two trucks that are now worthless basically I'd be shocked if they even get scrap value for them. Probably can't even pull the wheels off of them. Like, literally nothing on these trucks is salvageable. It's just a real bummer, man. Um, so, 81... Here's the kicker, right? Like I said, 81 containers went missing. They were able to recover 62 of them uh, because the rest they just couldn't find. To do that 
It costs $9.5 million. You want to talk about adding insult to injury. Number one, you just screwed up pretty royally by, and that's even assuming that these were the most expensive pieces of cargo, right? Because those are big containers. They could have been filled with some expensive stuff that could have gone to the bottom. So who knows how much money worth of inventory and cargo they lost. Probably covered by an insurance company, but you can bet your insurance rates are going up after that. $9.5 million. $9.5 million to clean that stuff up. And I know some people are probably thinking, like, well, why wouldn't you just leave it there? Well, number one, it's on record, and I'm sure that they probably got some sort of fine for even dumping it or losing it. And if they didn't, then I'm sure they would get some kind of fine for leaving it down there. Everything's on record these days. They would definitely... I'm pretty sure I have to go back and get that stuff uh, and pay the oh, 10 mil. I need to re I need to open a business that will go and recover things from the the ocean because apparently I'm in the wrong line of business here. Man, that's just crazy to me. Um, but anyway, moving on here. Are you listening? Damn. 